Hello, uh, welcome back. Uh, we have been looking at uh, the tissues, okay? Where we have been talking about the four main types of tissues, which are the epithelial tissue, connective tissue, and now we are looking at nervous tissue, the last of which is supposed to be muscular tissue, okay? So, the last presentation we are talking about the connective tissue, and now in the nervous tissue, we are saying the nervous tissue is actually uh, the main component of the nervous system. It makes up the nervous system. The nervous system is divided into the brain and the spinal cord as well as the, the nerves. Uh, on the other hand, it is also divided into what is referred to as the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system, the central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. So the name central just comes from their location. If you see where the brain is in relation to the human body, it is on the central part. And the spinal cord is actually on the central part. So the brain and the spinal cord are attached and they are on the central part. They are known as the central nervous They make up what is known as the central nervous system, whereby the nerves move from the central nervous system to other parts of the body, like the hand, the fingers. So the information moves from the fingers to the central nervous system, and those are make up what is known as the peripheral nervous system. Okay, so the learning objective in this is to describe the characteristic of the nervous system. The terms that we are going to find are terms such as myelin, which is a substance produced by cells of the neuroglia, okay? That increases the speed of impulses along the axon and the neuronal fiber. We shall find terms like the nervous tissue, which will refer, refer to the principal constituent of the central and peripheral nervous system, comprised neurons and the neuroglia cells. Then the brain, which is the control center of the central nervous system located in the skull. Okay, so the nervous tissue is one of the four classes of the tissues as we have already highlighted. It is a specialized tissue found in the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. It comprises of neurons and supporting cells called neuroglia. So the supporting cells of the nervous system is known as the neuroglia. Therefore, the nervous system is responsible for the control of the body and communication among its parts. The nervous, system, the, the nervous tissue con, 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 contains two categories of cells, which are the neurons or neuroglia. Neurons are highly specialized nerve cells that generate and conduct nerve impulses, okay? A typical neuron consists of the dendrite cell body and the axon. So we said a neuron and the neuroglia are two categories of, uh, categories of cells that make up the nervous tissue, okay? So this is the uh, the the diagram, the picture of the neuron. It is made up of dendrites. Okay, so these are the dendrites. They get information from other cell bodies or from other cells to the cell body, which is this. So they get information. They receive information from uh, anywhere around and transmit it to the cell body. Okay, then information in the cell body is processed and sent through the axon, which goes all the way to the axon terminal. So where the axon terminals are, they are joining another cell. They are joining another cell on this end. The other cell they are joining, they are joining it from here, where they have the dendrites. So these can attach on the other dendrites and others can attach directly on the cell body and the, all that. So the, the, the dendrites of another cell here will get information from this cell to another cell, also through the same process, coming into the cell body away 
from the cell body through the axon. So this axon is covered by some uh, the, material, the substances known as the, the myelin sheath, which is a fatty substance that covers the, my, the, the axons, which has a lot of other, uh, uh, a lot of uh, functions, which include insulation of the, of the axon, okay? As well as nutrition. Also, they help in the fast conduction of impulses from the cell body to there. So this is the more reason why we have impulses traveling at a very high speed. It's because of the presence of this myelin sheath in what is known as saltatory conduction of impulses, saltatory conduction of impulses. Through these spaces in between each myelin sheath, known as it, the nodes of Ranger. So when information is coming here, instead of it going through the course of the axon, it will be jumping through this uh, myelin sheet. It will be jumping and only acting on the spaces of the nodes, known as the nodes of Ranger. So it will jump like that, and uh, up to there, then it jumps to the last one, then it goes into the system, and it's transmitted to where it is supposed to go. Until we reach the end where I decide we are going to have a muscle. So if we have a muscle here, then these impulses will go straight into a muscle, then we have muscle contraction. Through what we are called, we are calling innovation in the previous uh, discussion. So it innovates the muscle, then we have the appropriate response. Okay, so this is about the the neuron. All right. So we have already discussed the function of the dendrites, what, uh, what the dendrite does. So the axon is, uh, already, we have already talked about the surrounding of the, uh, the, 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 the axon, which is the whitish fatty layer called the, the myelin sheath. And we have talked about what it does. Therefore, outside the myelin sheath, there is a cellular layer called the neurilemma. So this is the membranous layer that covers the myelin sheath outside so that it is also protected. Okay. Then we have what are known as the Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system. These Schwann cells are neuroglia cells that support neuronal function by increasing the speed of impulse propagation. Through what I said, what I, uh, I earlier on mentioned to say there are no, uh, the, the propagation is referred to as the uh, saltatory conduction. Okay. These cells are underlain by medullary sheath, and the medullary sheath is interrupted by intervals of the rods of Ranga. So, in this picture, the Schwann cells are here. These are the Schwann cells. And these Schwann cells actually synthesize the, the they synthesize the axon sheet in terms of injury. Okay. And that is what happens in the peripheral nervous system. Okay. Um Let's look at the types of uh, the nervous tissue. The nervous tissue consists of nervous, the nervous system consists of nervous tissue, which is composed of two principal types of cells called the neuron and the neuroglia. So here we are going, at the end of this, we'll be required to describe the main cells that comprise the nervous tissue. The, the terms that we are going to find a neuron, which is the main cell type in the nervous system. The main cell types, type in the nervous system is referred to as a neuron. Opposed to what is usually referred to as a nerve. What is referred to as a nerve usually is the main cell type in the uh, peripheral nervous system. When I'm talking in basically about the, uh, the central nervous system, the main cell type is usually referred to as a neuron. So the main cell type of the nervous system is the neuron broadly put. Neuroglia are supporting cells of the nervous 
this way. Okay. So, the nervous tissue is one of the four types of uh, the, the, the four uh, main tissue types, which is composed of neurons and the supporting cells called the, the neuroglia. Neuroglia, also called the glial cells, that's another name. So, you find in other uh, descriptions or you know, in other literatures, they are referring to them just as glial cells. They mean the neuroglia, which are the supporting cells for them. So, uh, for the for the nervous system, the neuroglia are six types. Okay, there are six types of neuroglia: four uh, in the central nervous system and two in the peripheral nervous system. These glial cells are involved in many specialized functions apart from supporting the neurons. Okay, the neuroglia of the nervous system include cells such as the astrocytes, the microglia. The epidemic cells and the, the oligodendrocytes. In the peripheral nervous system, they comprise of what are known as the satellite cells and the Schwann cells, which we have already seen, are two kinds of neuroglia. So these are in the central nervous system, these are in the peripheral nervous system. We have already outlined what they do in the, uh, I mean, what makes up the peripheral and what makes up the central nervous system. So these astrocytes in the central nervous system, their main job is to control the chemical environment around the neurons. So if the chemical environment is not controlled around the neurons, we'll find that the transmission and the activity of the nerve will not be as it is supposed to be and it will cause a nervous system disorder. So the astrocytes do that job. Microglial cells on the other hand, also in the central nervous system, they also act as phagocytic macrophages and help cleaning up the neuronal debris in, 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 in case of uh, invasion by a microorganism. These or engulf the, the microorganism, kill it, and then throw it away, just like the macrophages do. Okay? Then we have the ependymal cells. These ependymal cells are ciliated and they line the central cavities of the brain and the spinal cord, where they form a fairly permeable barrier that is what their main function is to form a permeable barrier between the cerebrospinal fluid that fills these cavities and the tissues of the central nervous system. The oligodendrocytes, on the other end, they line up along the nerves and produce an insulating cover called the myelin sheath, okay? They produce an insulating cover called the myelin sheath, so they produce the myelin sheath. They are found in the central nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, we said we have two types, which are the satellite cells. Okay, they surround the neurons, the cell bodies, and the in the in the peripheral nervous system. They are just like the astrocytes in the central nervous system. Schwann cells, on the other end. They surround all the nerve fibers in the peripheral nervous system and form a myelin sheath around the nerve fibers. They are found in the peripheral nervous system and their function is similar to that of the oligodendrocytes. The neurons, they consist of the cell body and more slender process. And this is what we are talking about on the neuron. We described the neuron and when we are going through that picture, that is what is known as a neuron. The neuronal cell bodies consist of the nucleus and rough endoplasmic reticulum, also known as the nasal body, okay? The rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we talked about the endoplasmic reticulum when we were talking about the cell. So this endoplasmic reticulum, we said in the cell, we said the smooth ER and the rough ER. So you just get that function and also place it here. But when it comes to the neuron, 
that ER is referred to as the initial body. The body, the cell body is the major biosynthetic center of a neuron and contains the usual organelles for synthesis uh, of proteins and other chemicals. Arm-like processes extend from the cell body to all neurons, okay? Therefore, um, the two types of uh, the two types of neuron processes we have already outlined are the dendrites and the axons. The dendrites are motor neurons uh, that have short and have large surface area for receiving signals, whereby axons are the ones that carry information from the cell body to the to away actually they carry information from the cell body away from the cell body to either a target organ to, to a target uh, to the effector organ such as the muscle or to another neuron okay so dendrites receive axons send away the information that is what we were explaining in that picture which we were analyzing. So basically, that is about the nervous tissue. Moving on, we are also talking lastly about it, the muscular tissue. The characteristic of muscular tissue is that there are three types of the muscular tissue. One is known as the skeletal tissue, smooth, uh, smooth muscles, as well as the cardiac muscle. So we have skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. The aim or the objective in this discussion is that you should be able to describe the types of muscle tissue. Okay, you should be able to describe and know where they are coming from. The key terms here are skeletal muscle. So the skeletal muscle are those muscles which are voluntary muscles in vertebrates. We are vertebrates which is striated and anchored by tendons to the bones. These are muscles that are supposed to be attached to the bones and are used to effect skeletal movements such as locomotion. So the muscles that we are talking about or those that are referred to as skeletal muscles are those muscles that are attached from one bone to the other. And when they contract across the joint, they cause movement. And these are the muscles that allow us to make any form of movement walking, including any form of movement that you see is necessitated by the muscles, okay? Involuntary muscles are a muscle movement, the term involuntary in this discussion will refer to a muscle movement, not under conscious control, such as beating of the heart, okay? So conscious control is that control where you think about what you want to happen. You want to jump, you will think about it, you will think about it. Let me jump from this side, not the other side. You think about it, that is voluntary, which the skeletal muscle does. But involuntary are those that happen like when the heart is beating. When you are breathing, you are not thinking about breathing or the heartbeat, you can't stop it, okay? It works involuntarily. These muscles have striations. And a striation, uh, when we say striated, what the stri striation means is that the word striated means the striped appearance of certain muscle types in which myofibrils are aligned to produce a constant directional tension. Okay? So you find when you look at the muscle type, you find like it has stripes on it. Those stripes are what I refer to as striations on a muscle. Voluntary, a muscle movement under conscious control, e.g. designing to move a forearm. Smooth muscle are involuntary muscles that are found within the intestine, throat, uterus, and blood vessels, the smooth muscles. They are involuntary because these organs that have been mentioned here, they don't need you to think about their activity for them to work. They just work involuntarily depending on the normal physiological being of that organism. Cardiac muscle are striated and involuntary muscles of the vertebrate heart. 
So they had the muscles that make up, the heart are known as cardiac muscles. The muscles that make up the internal organs, intestines and all the other internal organs, such as the uterus blood vessels, are known as smooth muscles, whereby the muscles that make up the outside, the bulk muscles which we have outside, such as the biceps, and the muscles that make up the, the thigh, the arm, those muscles which are outside, are referred to as skeletal muscles because they are the ones that even uh, uh, that is, that are responsible for uh, 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 gross movement. Those larger movements that we we do, the ones that we plan to make. Muscle is a soft tissue that is highly specialized for the production of tension, which results in the generation of force. Okay, muscle cells also known as myocytes, contain myofibrils comprised of actin and mouse filament, which slide on each other, okay? They slide on each other on the my, uh, microscopic watch of my, muscle contraction. You are going to see that there are some filaments that are known as mouse and actin filament, where which will be sliding on each other to cause the tension that is known as muscle contraction. Numerous myocytes make up muscle tissue and the controlled production of tension in these muscles can generate significant force. So these myofibrils at the molecular level, they have to contract in good numbers. So more contractions in that big muscle produ produces uh, significant force, which is the force that we see in the muscles. Type of muscle tissue can be classified functionally, voluntarily, or involuntarily, as well as by morphology. Okay, are they striated or non striated? Okay, by applying the above classification, it is possible to describe three forms of muscle tissue which perform wide range of functions described. Skeletal muscles. These are mainly attached to the skeleton, okay, via what are known as the tendon. So as the muscle belly goes, at the end of it, you are going to see a thread-like appearance, which is referred to as a tendon. That is what attaches it to the bone to maintain posture, control movement, okay, such as contraction of the biceps muscles attached to the scapular radius. All these gross movements that we make are done by the skeletal muscle through this mechanism of attachment. Skeletal muscle is under voluntary control in that you think of those movements. Though it can also be done subconsciously. Movement of skeletal muscles can also be done subconsciously. For example, when maintaining posture or balance, you don't think about maintaining posture or balance subconsciously, you just find yourself adjusting to balance up and to maintain the correct posture. Whereby cardiac muscle tissue is found only in the heart, only in the heart, where cardiac contractions pump blood throughout the body and maintain blood pressure. Okay. As with skeletal muscle, uh, as with skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle is also striated. It also has some line lines which look like it, lines and they refer to as striations. However, it is not consciously controlled. And so it is called involuntary. It works involuntarily. Cardiac muscle can be further differentiated from skeletal muscle by the presence of what are known as intercalated discs, which control the synchronized contraction of cardiac muscle. So for the heart to contract, it has what are known as the ventricular muscles and the atrial muscles. Those are uh, cells of the mass of the cardiac muscle are connected through what are known as the intercalated disc, discs, the intercalations. So that is where the stimulation for muscle contraction passes and it allows the heart to contract in a rhythmical way that the heart does, as opposed to what happens in skeletal muscles. Okay. Smooth muscles. And smooth, smooth, smooth muscle tissue is found uh, uh, is found associated with numerous other organs 
and tissue systems such as the digestive system and the respiratory system. This type of muscle, this muscle type plays an important role in the regulation of uh, flow in such tissues. For example, aiding the movement of food through the digestive system through what is known as peristalsis. So smooth muscles are found in such kind of tissues, uh, tissues, uh, organs. Smooth muscles are non-striated, although they contain the same uh, filament as those that are just organized, uh, just organized differently, okay? And they are involuntary, meaning you cannot control them. They operate independently. So this, in a picture, this is how they look like, okay? So these are the, the skeletal muscles. If you look at them, they are whitish appearance, red, whitish red, and at the end of the day, they look like stripes, okay? They look like stripes in them, and these are what are referred to as striations, striated muscle. Here, this one doesn't look like that. It is referred to as here, smooth muscles. It doesn't have stripes. But when you come here on the cardiac muscles, they also have stripes, 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 stripes like, okay? interconnected with what are known as the intercalated discs, okay? They are the ones that push or that make the flow of information easier from one cell type to the other. This is a mass of cell types at a much smaller level, so we may not be able to see them here. Here we can only be able to see the striations, okay? So these are the muscle types. Muscle types, the cardiac, skeletal, cardiac and skeletal muscles are both striated in appearance while smooth muscles are not. Both cardiac and smooth muscle are involuntary while skeletal muscle is voluntary. That is what they are in conclusion. All right. Thank you for listening.